Can GE crops reduce agriculture's environmental impacts? Like some of the other questions I've addressed in this series, the answer is complex. On one side, there are studies that support the idea. One study, for instance, by agricultural economists Brooks and Barfoot, found that in 2018 alone, emissions reductions related to GE crops were, quote, equivalent to removing 15.27 million cars from the roads. And Kovac et al. estimated that were the EU to widely adopt existing GE crops, which they haven't yet, European greenhouse gas emissions would decrease by 7.5%, equating to 33 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. On the other hand, others argue that such estimates, which are largely based off of expected yield increases and corresponding reductions in land use and inputs like herbicides and pesticides, don't take into account important factors that may nullify environmental benefits in the long term. For example, herbicide tolerant and insect resistant GE crops, which are the most widely produced GE crops, can lead to the evolution of herbicide resistant weeds and insect toxin resistant insects, respectively. Not only can this lead to weed and pest infestations that nullify yield increases, it as a result can also force farmers to actually increase their use of herbicides and pesticides nullifying input reductions as well. Research has also suggested that, independently of resistance evolution, herbicide-tolerant GE crops have increased herbicide use by allowing farmers to indiscriminately spray their fields. This has potential negative environmental implications because, one, some GE-associated herbicides may be toxic to certain organisms, and two, dicamba, one of those herbicides, often drifts from field to field and destroys crops and other plants that aren't tolerant to it. Finally, scholars have argued that GE crops and associated herbicides are causing the deprioritization of alternative and potentially more sustainable agricultural systems. For example, some have suggested that agroecological engineering, the incorporation of low input agriculture with the natural environment, to prove a more sustainable solution to pest issues, as it doesn't drive the evolution of resistant pests. However, agroecological practices are incompatible with current and thoroughly embedded GE crop-based systems. Ultimately, it seems that the most widely grown GE crops have debatable environmental effects. There is some evidence that they could be beneficial in this regard, but it's also hard to quantify the extent to which they might generate new environmental issues or simply reinforce practices that could already be detrimental. It's also important to note that HT and IR crops were not developed with an environmental intent at all, and that crops engineered specifically to address environmental challenges, say for instance, crops that use less water and could help conserve it, could be more effective in the long term. They just aren't being developed as much.